Hello, this is a video comparing the Nord Wave 2 with the Nord Stage 3. Now a quick warning before we continue with this video. This video was specifically designed for people who are barely just beginning with their journey into synthesis and what synthesizers are and do, and or who are brand new to the world of Nord and how Nord keyboards work and what their offerings are. So if you're a pro user, you've been using Nord for your whole life, and you are an expert and you already own several keyboards, this is not your video. This is more like a newbie video or a novice video. Now these two keyboards are completely different and for those of you who own one or the other, you will think they are apples and oranges night and day and have nothing to do with each other. But from an outsider's point of view, someone who is brand new to the world of Nord, someone who doesn't own a Nord already, and they are looking at the Wave 2 versus the Stage 3, that comparison is not as easily dissected. It looks like on the surface there are a lot of similarities, and to be truthful, there are a lot of similarities, yet there are quite a few differences. So the first question you have to ask yourself is, what is important to you in terms of what kinds of sounds you want to have coming out of that keyboard? If you know right out of the box you are going to be very interested in the best sounding, highest quality piano sounds, then the Stage 3 is your keyboard. Look no further, because there really is no piano engine on the Wave 2. It doesn't exist. Can you play basic piano sounds on the Wave 2? Yes, and basic is probably as far as I would go to, to compliment them on that. There are some basic piano samples. Most of them are not in stereo, and they're really a means to an end. They really aren't designed to be a piano substitute. And not only that, if you're looking for electric pianos, such as the Rhodes sound or the clav clavinet sounds, none of those sounds, they are there on the Wave 2, but they're not purpose-built with that in mind. You really want to hang out with the Stage 3 if you are going to be looking to reproduce those types of sounds. The second thing is if you are an organ uh, enthusiast and you want the authentic draw bars or even the digital draw bars, the nine draw bars that make up the sound of so many classic songs as well as new songs or gospel music, the organ is really strong and actually exists on the stage three. There is no organ engine per se on the Wave 2, none whatsoever. There are no draw bars. There's no rotary speaker emulation like there is on the Stage 3. So, wow, there's a lot of differences there. So if you are an organ enthusiast and that's really important and you're trying to find a keyboard that can mimic organ, can mimic really authentic piano, great sounding piano sounds, lush, beautiful sounds from the piano, the Stage 3, it's it. That's it. That's where you drop the mic and you go by the Stage 3. Now, if the Stage 3 budget is quite steep for you, you could consider an Electro 6. An Electro 6 has an organ engine just like the Stage 3, it has a piano engine just like the Stage 3, and it can play samples just like the Stage 3. The difference being that the Electro 6 comes in slightly different keyboard variants. You don't get an 88 key choice on the, on the Electro. You do get an optional 61 key key keyboard for the Electro 6. So if you want something really small and light, the Electro 6 61 key might be a good option for you. And that's also the least expensive of the bunch of the ones I'm talking about. Um, but the Electro 6 can really only play one sample at a time, whereas the Stage 3 can play two samples at a time using panel A and B. On top of that, the Stage 3 has a full-blown synthesizer built in as well in that synth engine. So the synth engine on the Stage 3 can play both synthesizer sounds as well as sample sounds. So the Stage 3 gives you a lot more flexibility, a lot more options, more more just about everything. You can almost think of the Stage 3 as double that of the Electro++++. Plus Plus Plus. It also has an extern section which allows you to better control external keyboards. Uh, it can be um, it's far more flexible on the splitting in terms of the layering and the splitting. Because you have those panel A and B, it's like having two synths in one when you get the Stage 3. So if you are looking for an all-around awesome keyboard, Stage 3 really, really has it. If you want to see a complete list of the details between the Nord Electro 6 and the Stage 3, you can check out my video on YouTube for that. Now, the Wave 2 is brand new. And what is special about that? The Wave 2 is special unto itself. It has the ability to play four layers, whereas the Stage 2 3 really only has the ability to play two layers. The Wave 2 has the ability to play both samples, 
just like the Stage 3, as well as it's a full-blown synthesizer as well. All right, so let's just compare the synths first. Which synthesizer is better? That's a close call. I would say I would give the credit to the Wave 2 as being a more powerful synthesizer than the Stage 3 in many aspects. Probably not in all aspects, but in many aspects. It's got a better arpeggiator. It's got the ability to do impulse morph, which gives you an added control over your morphing that the Stage 3 does not have. Um, however, I think the Stage 3 has more split capability in terms of being able to put any sound pretty much anywhere on the keyboard within its split zone range. The Wave 2 does have the ability to split the keyboard up to three times, four zones, just like the Stage 3, but where you put those layers, uh, you have a little bit more restriction on where the layers go. In other words, layer A always has to be the far most on the left, layer B has to be second, layer C is third, and layer uh, D is fourth. Now you can flip-flop the layers, so it's not a huge deal. You can end up getting what you want. But I do think that the Stage 3 has some nice split capability. Now keep in mind, too, when you're comparing these two keyboards, the Wave 2 only comes in a 61-key version. That's it. That's the only keyboard they make, the only size they make. That'll give you a nice five octaves from C to C. It's probably more than enough for most things, but it is not enough if you're planning on playing classical music or you really want an instrument that's going to uh, be your main keyboard. Um, I, th I think it can be the main keyboard for a lot of keyboard players, but what I find is that if you're in a cover band, especially, when you're imitating music, and you are needing pianos and organs, I mean, that's essentially a lot of what you need when you are in a cover band. Pianos, organs, some synth, or maybe a lot of synth. But the Wave 2 doesn't really do pianos and organs, so I see it more as a secondary keyboard for someone in a cover band. Uh, for those of you who are new to synthesis, you don't play in a band, you're not a professional musician, but you're more of an amateur musician or a person who's looking to get into music and you are fascinated with synthesis and you want to learn synthesizers and you want to create lush landscapes and never-ending sound capabilities, sounds that no one has ever created before, and you want a platform to do that, I think the Wave 2 is a stronger platform than the Stage 3 because you have four layers, the ability to play samples, and a full-blown synthesizer all in one that's slightly less expensive than the Stage 3, then I think the Wave 2 is your keyboard. That's not to say that the only people buying a Wave 2 are those who are enthusiastic about synthesis, but I do think that is the, the claim to fame. This is a full-blown synthesizer and sampler player all in one when I talk about the Wave 2. They both play sounds from the Nord Sample Library 3.0, so in that respect, they are similar. They can play the same sample sounds. Uh, they both have the ability to create your own samples and load those samples onto the mechanism. There is more storage on the Wave 2 when it comes to samples. Then the polyphony on the Wave 2 is better on the synth side of things. In other words, there's 48 voices of polyphony versus 34 on the Stage 3, so you do get more polyphony. But you do need more polyphony to support four layers. You're playing four things at once, so there's a lot going on there. You need that polyphony to support that. Not to say that 48 is not enough. I have really yet to run out of polyphony on the Wave 2 in my 10 or so hours playing it thus far. It's not to say that I couldn't trick it into running out of polyphony. That would be easy to do. But as far as normal performance playing, I have yet to really run out of polyphony to speak of. So the Wave 2, uh, what else can I say about it? It has a nice grouping feature, so it's, it's highly organized and highly uh, appropriate for on-the-fly changes. The Stage 3 is appropriate for that too, but I think the Wave 2 slightly edges it out as far as performance tweaking on the fly and total mastery of what's going on and when. It's so easy to turn those layers on and off. It's so easy to adjust the volume levels of those layers at the same time, two at a time, three at a time. It's so easy just to go down to those faders and move them around. That's a lot harder on the Stage 3 because you have to flip panels. You have to go to panel B, adjust the volume, go back to panel A, adjust the volume. That's a lot of moving parts there. The Wave 2, just you look at it, you adjust the volume, you can hold different parts and different layers at one time. It's really incredible what it can do. So there are a lot of similarities and a lot of differences. Again, to sum up, what I think you would want to look for is that the Wave 2 has more sonic capability from a synthesizer standpoint, synthesizer and sample player. It does have more sonic opportunity and capability. 
However, if you are looking for that piano and organ emphasis and synthesizer and sample player capability all in one keyboard, and you're not so concerned about having two extra layers, or you're not really concerned about really going deep into synthesis, and you don't really want to spend all your time creating sounds and soundscapes, and you're not doing that type of music, you're basically a person who just wants an all-around great keyboard, then the Stage 3 would still, would still be your, your ticket. What's your next step? Now that you've learned some of the basic features, you might want to check out some of the finer details, all the nitty gritty. To do that, go to mykeystomusic.com, click at the top where it says Buyer's Guide. There you'll see a PDF that I created, and I went through every single aspect of these two keyboards and compared them side by side at nauseum, and you'll see that this sheet is fairly elaborate. Take a look at that. Now some of that might be Greek to you, especially if you are new to the world of synthesis but there's a lot of it that you will understand right out of the box. Take a look. I also compare the Nord Electro 6 and the Nord Lead A1. I compare all four of those keyboards and their different sizes on this one sheet. You can magnify it in your browser to take a closer look because it's pretty tiny from the get-go. You can also download it right from the browser too. Feel free to have that and take a look at it and use it as your guide. The Nord website is also another great resource, www.nordkeyboards.com. They also do comparisons, but they compare, let's say, the Stage 3 with the Stage 2. So if you are upgrading your keyboard, you want to go there and look at those comparison charts. But if you're trying to compare which Nord keyboard is best for you, take a look at my chart. In addition, and not mentioned on this video, are things like the Nord Grand, which has emphasis for piano, and the Nord Piano 4, which is also emphasis on people looking strictly for a piano instrument. I shouldn't say strictly because they also play samples and they're great keyboards unto themselves, but I don't own those two keyboards. I don't know as much about them, but I do know that you want to take a good look at those, especially if piano is your priority. We'll have a lot more comparison videos down the road where we do compare this nitty-gritty in great detail in video form, if you are so inclined to join me on that. Feel free to subscribe, like this video, and share it with those who might benefit. In the meantime, feel free to use the comments section to ask as many questions as you see fit, and we'll go through that. This will create a great conversation back and forth. You'll be working with people who have experience with the Nord keyboards, as well as people brand new, just trying to discover more and figure out if Nord is is a brand for them. Thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on the next one.